Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today, we're actually doing an overview of the entire first season and talking about what worked, what didn't, and what could have been done differently. First and foremost, if you haven't watched any of these episodes before, there are 60 videos before this one, each going into minute detail about how each individual episode making up this season went. They're all linked in the playlist above. Power Rangers begins with five teenagers known as Jason Scott, Zach Taylor, Billy Cranston, Trini Kwan, and Kimberly Hart, who are brought together by a wizard in a time warp named Zordon and his robot assistant Alpha 5. They are given the powers of ancient creatures and dinosaurs to fight against the evil Rita Repulsa and her gang of evil space aliens who want to take over the Earth. When the Rangers finally start to get the hang of things, Rita reveals that she's had a six power coin, which is one piece of the puzzle that the Rangers used to morph or change into their costumes, and she selects a new kid at school named Tommy Oliver to become the new Green Ranger. There's a five-part saga that ends with Tommy becoming good and leaving Rita for forever, joining the team as the Sixth Ranger. Oh, and he and Kim are dating now. Kind of. It's nebulous. Later on, it's discovered that Tommy touched magic wax while working with Rita, which she formed into a green candle, which will burn out into nothingness, draining Tommy of all of his powers. It makes sense because the one thing that she created that did super well is now working against her. Jason attempts to get the green candle in time to stop it from taking away Tommy's powers for forever, but unfortunately, he fails. The only choice Tommy has is to fuse his powers with Jason, stepping down from being a Power Ranger. Then, Rita decides to attack at full force, creating a Zord of her own for her right-hand man, Goldar, called Cyclopsis which nearly defeats the Power Rangers for forever. Just when things are looking grim, the Rangers win, and when asked if they want to remain Rangers, they agree to do so since there's still crime and whatnot in their city called Angel Grove. From there, the next big moment happens with the Rangers' parents getting kidnapped, and they must call on Tommy to infuse him with some unstable power to become the Green Ranger again to help get their power coins back from Goldar. And this brings Tommy back into the group full swing before we end the season with Tommy fighting cautiously with the other Rangers in order to preserve his powers while the other five continue to do their best against Rita's Monsters of the Week. So what worked here? For one thing, the different personalities of each of the Rangers. Zack is a fun-loving, cocky guy. Billy is into science and incredibly intelligent. Trini is very environmentally conscious as well as a strong fighter. Kimberly is a valley girl who loves shopping and boys. Jason's a bit of a blank slate who kind of just always does the right thing, and he's not afraid to make decisions as the leader of the Rangers. Tommy is very similar to Jason in that he tries his best, but he comes off as more naive than the other Rangers as the one who has been a Ranger for the least amount of time in the season. Sometimes he insists on going forth and saving the Rangers despite the obvious risks of his powers depleting, which are noble as well as makes him a bit of a martyr. Additionally, it's no surprise the show became such a massive hit when it did. 1993 was all about dinosaurs to begin with, with Jurassic Park coming out just months before the first episodes of Power Rangers, and it was a different type of show that American children had never seen before. A team of superheroes who were teenagers isn't necessarily a new concept, but the way they presented it as well as interspliced awesome Japanese fighting footage was. Having such a diverse cast also ensured that there was almost no one left unrepresented in race, ethnicity, or even personality. Additionally, almost all of the Rangers developed throughout the show, which was definitely helped by the actors actually just getting more comfortable in their roles. Billy sees the most development from a meek, nerd-like character who needs Trini as a translator to become a damn good fighter in his own right and who can speak normally to his friends. Kimberly starts as vapid and stuck in her own head to becoming a character who seems to really be influenced by those around her, becoming a much more caring person. The other four rangers remain pretty stagnant, the worst being Trini, as nothing seems to really change her as much as things just kind of happen around her. It's unfortunate because I feel like her character could have developed to where she started by loving the environment and being very conscious of her friends, by being a bit crass and having an attitude beforehand. Now there's a lot more than that that worked for the show, but let's get into what didn't work because it's there too. First of all, the formulaic nature of the show probably straddles a line between working for children and not working at all on its own. For instance, as a child, and even as an adult, I could not have cared less about the Megazord battles, but they always had to happen in order to sell the toys. I understand that, but my god, they got so repetitive and boring toward the end there. 
Furthermore, the show has a lot of hindrances and hoops to jump through solely because they're adapting a Japanese television show. This sometimes makes things nonsensical or just plain weird, such as when Billy and Trini are just not around at all in an episode called A Pressing Engagement. The writers definitely struggled with this concept at the start because, well, who wouldn't? But it doesn't make for great television. Also, the end of the season seems to become all about Tommy, especially after he comes back, to the point that my favorite episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1 are all the ones where Tommy just isn't around. It's not because Jason David Frank is any worse than anyone else on the show or anything, though. It's just frustrating to see all this attention given to one character when someone like Trini and Jason desperately needed some attention put onto them. So what could they have done differently? Frankly, I think integrating Tommy into the team more would have helped a lot of the issues, as well as created some conflict between the Rangers. There's an episode toward the end of the season called On Fins and Needles, where Jason and Tommy are at each other's throats due to a spell from Rita. And it's one of the more interesting episodes because there's actual conflict between our heroes. In fact, right before Tommy shows up, there's an episode called Switching Places where Billy and Kim switch bodies somehow, and there's a scene with Billy and Kimberly screaming at each other in the hallway. No spell. No idea that Rita had anything to do with it. They're just angry at each other, and I like it because being friends with someone has its peaks and valleys, whether you're saving the world or just sipping drinks at a juice bar. I also feel like there was so much world building and storytelling that they could have done that just wasn't. For example, why does Rita have the six power coin? Where did Zordon even come from? What about Alpha? I understand that there's more seasons, but man, there's 60 episodes here to explore things. It's a shame that there's a lot of unanswered questions, but I get it, I guess. It's a kid's show. So what are your thoughts of the first season of this show? Do you love it? Do you absolutely hate it? Let me know down below, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you never miss an episode of Ranger Reviews. So, what have we got coming toward us in season two? I'll just say, New villain, new zords, new rangers. Get ready. But until then, may the power protect you.